I think there is so much misinformation around sacred sexuality. I think that so much of it has been manipulated and twisted and so many different teachers, organizations, books, practices, offerings have hooked into the collective consciousness desire, need, want for better sex. And so they're selling things based on this need, this need, this want, this desire, or this problem, right? It's marketing 101, what's the problem? Find a thing, talk to the problem, make the problem worse, and then offer a solution to the problem. Here's what I see. Sex is a big fucking problem in our society. If we do not agree with that, then you probably don't wanna be on this live with me. You probably don't wanna be on this podcast. You probably don't wanna be in this YouTube video wherever you're at hanging out. For me, we have um, diminished the, the greatness that is sexuality. We have put it in a box and we've marketed the shit out of it. We sell it, we distort it, we um, twist it, we've somehow wrapped it up into something that should be hidden, not talked about, that should be shamed, that should be, um, oh my gosh, I can't even find words for how horrific it feels to me when I feel into what where we are at as a collective society, where we are at as a, a, you know, kind of society in large. That's not to say that, the, that there are not individuals who are here on podcast, live, YouTube, that have explored sexuality extensively, that have really opened up to the healing potential of sexuality that have really let go of the guilt and the shame and the pain and the distortions and the misuse of this power um, and are really holding it as a sacred expression, as a sacred energy in the body, as a sacred practice. Um, there are five elements that I want to weave into our conversation today as a starting point, right? We are barely scratching the surface of sacred sexuality. I love that our society is pushing into this. I love, <laughs> this sounds fucking awful, fucking awful, fucking awful. I'm just going to tell you this right now. This sounds fucking awful. This is one of these episodes where I am so on fire and I'm so passionate and it might, you might hate me because of this episode and I totally respect that. This might not be the one for you. But here's what I was gonna say. I love that we even have distorted sacred sexuality going on in the world. I, I, I fucking love it. That sounds awful. That sounds terrible. And you, you might wanna beat me up in this moment, but just give me a moment. Just hear me out. Just give me a second and then you can switch me off. We often have to go through a stage, and this is collectively, right? I'm not condoning the fact that people are being um, manipulated and people are being, you know, conned into different tantric spaces and sacred sexuality spaces, and it's all just a bunch of hoax pokes and a bunch of bullshit and, you know, all of that stuff. I, I'm not condoning that in any way, shape, or form. Here's what I'm, here's what I'm trying to say in my limited capacity for words at this point, but is we often have to go through a stage of dormant, dormant, like it's just shut down. We don't talk about it. We don't um, explore it. We don't open to it. We don't touch it. We, it's dormant, right? So it's, and you can feel, I know that in my grandparents' um, generation, that culture, it was, you just, it's just under the surface, right? We, it is hidden. It is hidden. It's dormant. <laughs> And a lot of our capacities around sexuality remain dormant. So we don't talk about it. We also don't express it. We certainly don't open to it, right? We, we're, we're, we're very shut down, repressed. It's like repressed sexual energy, repressed sexual energy, or, you know, like 2% of the fullness of our sexual energy is allowed to come online, is allowed to be expressed. Just feel that in yourself. And here's the a, here's a thing for those of you who are... Um, on YouTube or here on the live, what percentage of your, let's get real. Let's just be so fucking honest with ourselves. 
What percentage of your sexual energy do you think is online? I, I think this is a great question to ask, right? I think this is a great question to ask. How much life force is pouring through your body all of the time? How much creative capacity do you have? Not creative to be an artist or anything like that, but just like creative life force juice, aliveness. How much of it flows through you, right? How, how much chutzpah do you have? How much guts do you have? How much courage do you have? How much capacity to penetrate into something, to direct line something, to make something happen, or to call something in, to fucking magnetize something, to be so radiant, so beautiful, so alluring, that that thing, whatever it is that's meant for you, can't help but move into your life, right? So let's expand our thing on sexual energy. Expand it. Raw, pure essence of sexual energy. Raw pure essence, not the, the labels we put on top of it, the limits, the box that we put it in and we just make it some fucking pornography scene or some stupid magazine or some beer commercial with tits and boobs. This is not sexuality. It's not sexuality, right? Sexuality makes babies. It is the infinite life force of everything. Sexuality wakens people up into the highest states of consciousness, into fully realizing one's divinity. That's sexual energy, right? So let's not limit it to, oh, I think I'm at 100%. I highly doubt it. <laughs> let's, I'm saying this with love. I hope you all know that, right? I'm like, no, it's fiery, but it's with like this fucking desire and this passion for us all to come into more aliveness, more fullness, or to experience life from this state of fucking pleasure, of joy, of bliss, of, of um, connection, of deep connection, of intimacy, right? A level of intimacy. I see this so often is all genders, all, all genders, all human beings craving craving a level of intimacy. Cra I'm, I'm just craving to be intimate, not even physically intimate. I am craving to be connected. I'm craving um, to touch in in that way. I'm, I'm craving to be seen, to be known, to be recognized, to be honored, to be thanked, to be loved in that way, right? That <laughs> All right, so did you get your number? <laughs> I've given you some time. Did you get your number? Um, just guess, whatever it is, you know, two, maybe now that I've just like roared for five minutes, maybe now it's like, oh shit, I, I better only put like 1% because Sabrina's on a rant. <laughs> no, um, I would say for me, um, I've been exploring this forever, since my 20s. Right, my young 20s. I read that silly chapter in Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich on sex transmutation in my early 20s and I was like, there's something to that. What is that? There's way more to sexuality, way more and I'm gonna figure it out. I am going to figure it out. I heard a, a sex doctor talking in, I think I was maybe 23 at the time and he was saying there's, you know, levels to the female orgasm. There's levels, clitoral orgasm. That's just like a sneeze. That's just like a hachoo. And then we're going into cervical orgasms and full body orgasms and, right? And this was another like, So since my early 20s, since my early 20s exploring this, not just reading books on it either, and I would say now I'm 42, 42, I don't know, maybe 40%, I know nothing. I feel like there is so much more. And, um, and for me, um, what I want to bring to you in this conversation is one, just this awareness is, is, is one, this awareness two, to kind of shake us all awake, shake us all awake and to open us up to sexual energy touches every aspect of our lives. There is no place that my capacity to allow my own life force, let's swap out sexual energy for life force. There's no place in my, in my life where my life force energy and my capacity to embody it, to embrace it, to love it, to let it flow through me and to let it move out into the world. There's no place in my life that doesn't touch either my ability to let it flow 
or my <laughs> withholding of it, right? My collapse, my withholding of it, my guarding it, my protecting it, my withhold, all, all of those sorts of things. Um, so the aim here, just to this point, I promise we'll get to the five elements. Here's a confession. I don't exactly know what they are yet. I do. <laughs> Not sure which ones are going to come through though. I don't know which, which five are going to come through. Um, but really just this moment to invite us all as we go into this to go, okay, there's more here. There's more. There's a reason why there is why sacred sexuality is becoming a hot topic. There's a reason why Tantra is becoming like a thing. There's a reason why this divine masculine thing is coming around. There's a reason why union is coming around. Part of this reason, I'll give you my theory. This is a theory. Again, you can throw it in the fuck it bucket if you don't, if you don't feel um, that this resonates with you. As with everything, take, take what serves and put the rest in the fuck it bucket. It might serve later, right? And it might not. But my theory is that because so much of, um, hold on, I wanna get my words right around this. Um, we all know that much more of the feminine is rising, right? We, um, the feminine um, is rising and you can see it even in like the news and, and mundane stuff like um, this real focus on um, mother nature, on global warming, this real understanding of the interconnectedness, this real like globalization, we can call it in the news. And then if you look in, most of us are hanging, if you're hanging out with me, you're probably kind of hanging out in spiritual communities, right? You're probably kind of tapped into like the undercurrents of just the trends around um, what are the current awakening paths? What are the current practices? What are people being called to? What's kind of becoming common parlance. Divine feminine is becoming common parlance. It's really becoming this soul. You know, we're talking about soulful living embodiment practices, embodiment practices. Um, it's not um, spirit other than our bodies, our beings. It's spirit within our bodies, our beings um, as an expression of the divine feminine. So for me, we don't get, we don't get to walk the feminine path. We don't get to, we, we, I, I, again, you might fucking hate me for this one and that's fine. That's, I, that's okay. We don't get to walk this feminine path authentically, deeply without touching into sexuality. We don't, we don't, we don't. We don't get to say, I want a soulful life and not eventually touch into sacred sexuality, not eventually touch into our sexual energy. We, we legitimately cannot. I'm not saying that you need to be a sexual being. I'm saying two very different things here, two very different things. You can read many of the mystical texts, many of the mystical texts um, around working with the divine feminine and how Everyone who has walked that path long enough will hit sexual energy, will hit it. Why? It's because it is spirit asking, spirit, divine, soul, grace, God, Shakti, whatever word works for you, asking to come into every aspect of your being and every aspect of your life, including your sexual energy, including your, your, can we just use like, can I use the word pussy today? Can I use the word pussy today? I just like that word and I think we should reclaim the shit out of it, right? And let's use the word cock. I think we should reclaim that too, right? And, and it's, it's like that. Can you feel like it's bringing the profound into the seemingly profane? Seemingly profane, right? You, you use a different word if you need to. Use yoni and phallus if you want to. I love them all. I love them all, but just for making my point, when we start to move into sacred sexuality, we'll get to element one. Finally, Sabrina, finally, for God's sakes, enough of a warm up. Give me the five elements. <laughs> All right, element number one is our relationship to our body. So if we're talking authentic Tantra, we are talking sacred sexuality. We do not, <laughs> we do not get to avoid any aspect of our relationship with our body. That means we have to go into body image. That means we have to go into all the places we don't like about ourselves. That means the places where we don't think love can flow through, where we don't think the divine can flow through, where we are not in 
a, um, oh gosh, a right, healthy, love-filled relationship with the different areas of our body. I am telling you, this is element, this is like 101, this is sacred union 101, it is embodiment 101, it is feminine practices 101, it is sacred sexuality 101. Sacred sexuality 101. Because what it is, is this divine energy is asking to flow through our most harshly judged places. That's what sacred sexuality is. Our most harshly judged places, our most critiqued places, our most loathed places. This is partially why this path is so fucking fiery, right? People say it is going to strip you. It will rip you apart. It's because it will take you to the most, the most seemingly profane places and ask you to love them, ask you to bring light to them. I remember years ago, years ago when I was in this embodiment, um, this body relationship place, like really um, starting to bring the divine through my body, really starting to step into sacred sexuality, right? All of that was just organically opening up in me. I was exploring all of the archetypes, all of the archetypes around sacred union and all of this, everything is opening, right? Cervical orgasms start to happen for me. All like pleasure starts to move through my body in ways I had no fucking idea was even possible. But in that was I had this disdain for, oh, I see fire signs, I see a comment, it's Alexandra, I see your fire. Yeah, I got comments even if it's only for a moment. <laughs> um, but this, um, I didn't like when I would get bloated before bleeding. I, I, I just like, I love my body. I was at a place where it was like, yes, I love my breasts. I love my throat. I love my eyes. I just, you know, whatever this, these, this is my, like my scars, my like weirdness in my body. My, I have like a giraffe torso. I, you know, it's, it's like, no, none of us is perfect. There is no perfect. That doesn't even exist anyways. But coming to this really beautiful relationship of like the things that I didn't like when I was a teenager, like I just love, I love these things, but I was having this tough time with being bloated before bleeding. Hated it. Like, oh, I'm so, I'm just, I'm like a heifer. This is how I felt. These are my words, right? I'm not placing this on anyone. This is my story. I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just this like cow walk here. I'm just this heifer. Blech. And really seeing and having my, like my partner at the time who we explored all of these different things with him just loving, loving my bloatedness, loving my belly, loving my blood, loving it, loving it. And he literally feel into this because this is the fucking capacity that we have to do for each other. This is the capacity to, that we have. He loved what was for me the unlovable. He loved the unlovable and I allowed it. We have to allow, we have to be able to receive. We have to be able to receive. I was able to receive it because how many times has someone tried to love your pussy, love your cock, love something you don't love, love your ass, love your wrinkly thighs, love your whatever the heck it is that you don't seem to like about yourself and they genuinely love it, but you can't receive it. You can't let it be loved. That's a part of this path and it is a big part of this path. It is not even necessarily that our lovers, our lovers love that. It's being in a woman's circle, women loving, being naked together, women loving bellies and boobs and hips and thighs, right? And you just, wow, like the unlovable in me is being loved. Friends loving the unlovable, right? It's, it's, it's sometimes that's the gift. Sometimes we love the unlovable through different practices, different embodiment practices. Sometimes we're, you know, we work with energetic and archetypal energy that just loves the unlovable for us. So it doesn't have to be through another human being. I'm giving lots of different examples of this though, right? So it's a gift we can give and a gift that can be gifted to us. So what does that do? That literally changes a part of my body that I deemed um, 
deemed as a place that love cannot flow through, deemed as a place that is not divine perfection, that is not divinity running through me. It can't be because it's too ugly to be, it's too broken to be, it's too wounded to be, it's too gross smelling to be, it's too whatever the hell it is, right? Can you feel just this? This is element one. <laughs> One, can you feel how fucking profound of a gift that is? How profound of a gift that is to find these spaces, to find these people, to find these practices, to find what, how much just that will change your life. Just that, just that. Love, divinity, grace, perfection suddenly flows through places that we couldn't let it flow through before. It's so big and so beautiful. Okay, so, whew. So if element one is um, our bodies, I'm just gonna call it our bodies, right? Element one is the body. We're, we're taking the body with us. This is a path that we are taking the full body with us. So if that's element one, hmm. element two would be to specifically now, if we're gonna go body, let's get a little more specific. Element two is we will be required to explore all the ways. Hold on, let me get the right words here. I'm trying to feel it, I'm trying to burrow into your psyche at this point, and I'm trying to find the doorway that is least triggering, that is least shutting everything down, that is least protected, guarded, armored. This is why it's really good to work with a guide into these territories, right? This is why teachers are amazing, and facilitators, and great therapists, and great space holders, and great practices are really good, because we protect the shit out of these spaces. We don't do it consciously, we're not aware, right? We have armored guards all around these places and we have deeply ingrained patterns around these places. So um, when we start to feel into, <laughs> if you go back to the very start of this conversation and I said, what is the percentage? Um, oh, this is not my doorway. This is not my doorway, hold on a minute. <laughs> it's hard when we're public. It's different than like a dedicated space where we've all said yes to like working this territory together. It's just totally public. You have to find like the collective's doorway in, which is a different doorway than like people who are doing the online retreat that starts on Friday, than the women who were here for the in-person retreat over the weekend. It's a different, it's a different doorway. So just give me a second. I'm trying to get us a good one. Um, um, this one's a good one. Element two, we have to look at all of the things, the stories we place on top of raw, pure sexual essence. All of the ways that we limit what is this just beautiful, grace-filled, love-filled energy that is sexual. It is beautiful. It is glorious. It is, yes, it is powerful. Yes, it is potent, but it is not other than divine energy. It is not other than life force energy. It is not other than love energy. It is not other than grace. It is not other than just love. It is not other than that. It is not other than just this glorious gift. It is not other than just a channel for grace to flow through us a channel for spiritual energy to move through us. It's not other than. Now imagine the potency, the fire, the, the wildness, the rawness, the enormous amount of power in our sexual energy combining with the enormous amount of power and the wisdom and the grace and the light of divine energy. Imagine that. That's fucking sacred sexuality. That's sacred sexuality, right? But element number two, we will have to look at the shame around sexuality. We will have to look at how it's been limited by our family systems, how it's been limited by the way that we grew up, how it's limited by our sexual experiences. Our sexual experiences have mostly fucked us up because our sexual experiences are not sacred sexuality. They are not divine sexuality, right? Our like 
teenage sexual experiences, our 20s, typically not sacred sexuality. It's typically just this like raw, pure animalistic shit of like, well, I don't know, I saw this in a porn, want to do that? Cool, yeah. And then it evolves into, okay, we do A, B, C, D, E, and F, so then everyone gets their pleasure. We're always aiming to get an orgasm. Oh my God, I want to die, right? I want to die. <sighs> Sacred sexuality, sometimes not even sex. It's not even getting naked, it's not even touching, it's sometimes not even any of that, right? So we have to really work hard and there is so much, right? Go back to the start of this where I was sharing, sharing around, you know, how, just for me, if I just feel in my body how much is placed on my sexuality, how many judgments, how many projections, all the times that I got the cat call, all the times that I got the, you know, I don't even know, like the tap on the ass when walking by, all the times that I got the objectification, all the, t all the fucking times, right? And that's just one tiny little example of all the sexual experiences, of all the shit that's been placed on top of your sexuality. All the shits, you, you talk about um, masculine. Let's talk about the masculine. All the times now that there's just this fear, like, oh fuck, better shut down my sexual energy or I'm gonna have a lawsuit or I'm gonna be accused of something or, right? All, I mean, I'm giving you just two tiny little examples, but whoosh, go the whole way, go the whole way and just really honor how much has been placed on top of your sexual energy. If it's just this like innocent, raw, pure, beautiful, innate energy that is just as grace-filled as, I don't know, this was my funny, silly example yesterday, of playing crystal bowls. <laughs> I love it, let's just pretend that this is a crystal bowl. We'll use my chapstick and it's like, ding, it's so easy for it to be grace. Ding, it's so easy for me to stay connected to love and life. Ding, right? Now I need to get naked and fuck and stay in the same place. Stay in the same place, the same place, the same place. You literally are in this place. Totally connected, totally grace-filled, totally a gift, totally divine, but I'm naked and I'm fucking someone. That is embodied spirituality. That is soulful living, right? That is an insane spiritual path, right? That is quick, it is a rapid fire, it's intense, and it will take you places that you never imagined possible. Okay, so two was we need to look at our relationship to sexuality. Three, we're going deeper, right? All of these relate. Number three, we need to look at, let me feel, let me feel, let me feel, let me feel, let me feel. I hate that term, it's really annoying me. I want something different. Um, um, can you feel, when I was just giving that example of, you know, ding, ding, I'm this divine, ding, ding. <laughs> but now I'm naked and I'm having sex. Feel into all of the things that get in the way of that. All of the things that get in the way of that. You start to feel into, oh boy, I don't get to just be in my heart, my throat, my third eye, and my crown anymore. Which we've done a lot of work up here. As a collective, we've done a lot of work. As a new age spiritual culture, we've done a lot of work. A lot of work as a divine masculine based culture, we've done a lot of fucking work. Calling it down, right? Calling the grace from above through the heart. Let the heart go out. Okay, what about third chakra, second chakra, first chakra? What about that? And how much is that running your life? Yep, pretty easy. Ding, ding, let my heart explode. Ding, okay, now I have a cock. Ding. I'm letting it come out of my cock. Just as clean, just as pure, just as light filled, just as gifting, just as fucking divine. And I can feel most of you recoiling. 
I swear to God, catch yourself. I can feel most of you recoiling, right? That's how hard this path is. That's how hard this path is. It's intense, this thing. It's intense. So number three is everything. We don't get to just go to the heart. Oh, heart, oh, throat, oh, third eye. No, 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 no. We get to go into safety, security in the first chakra. All of that, right? Tribal belonging. We get to go into all of that. We get to go into power center. Where do I source my power from? Must overpower you in order to be safe in myself. Yeah, we get to work with that before this becomes a clean, clear, pure channel. But here's the gift of it. Here's the fucking gift of sacred sexuality is it cleans it all out, right? It cleans it all out. It cleans it up. We don't get to hide up here. Ding, ding. We get to hide. We get to hide. I get to stuff. I get to stuff the monster down in the basement, right? I get to stuff. I get to stuff my fears down there. I get, I get to stuff it, right? I get to stuff it. When we start working sacred sexuality, the whole channel. The whole channel streams light. The whole thing. The whole thing. Okay, four. This one's wild. This one's wild. And I know that so many of you can appreciate this because if you're hanging out with me, you've probably been doing a lot of feminine reclamation. You've probably been doing a lot of feminine reclamation. Right, we've been talking about divine feminine. We've been talking about um, the gifts of her, but here's, Here's the wild thing that I'm watching. I'm looking for my doorway again. Um, whew. Whew, this makes me cry. Oh. Until we um, can come to a place where we revere where we revere the depths rising as much as we revere the heights coming down, we don't get to sacred union. We don't. So let me explain this. The depths, the depths rising. The mysteries and the wisdom held in the depths, and I refer to the depths as oftentimes the, the cauldron of the sacred feminine, the cauldron of the sacred feminine. And so it's, it's, she comes oftentimes in serpent form or that energy, you can feel into it as kundalini energy, right? Until we see just as much grace, just as much light in the depths as we do in the heights, we don't get to get to sacred union. We don't, we don't, we don't, right? So there's this, oh gosh, oh, let me feel again. <sighs> this holding this space and just asking her, right? Asking her, asking her, and you can feel into her as your intuition, your emotional nature, your feminine nature, right? Your, your love, your capacity for life to flow through you, right? All of that, this capacity to be one with everything, which we don't fucking like, by the way, because most of us want boundaries and we don't like touching into the all of everything because it hurts. Ow, no, I need boundaries. I can say that because I did that shit. I did that shit, right? And there's a degree of truth in that stuff for sure. But what we're missing out on is that that's the fucking feminine opening up in us. That's the feminine showing us that we are always interconnected to the all of everything all of the time and we can't fucking get out of it. How much do you want to get out of it? How many times do you think, get me out of this life, get me out of this body, get me out of this real, these relationships, get me out of this world. I don't fucking belong here. Do you know how often I see that shit on Instagram? Do you know how often I hear that? Do you know how often I say that? <laughs> right? But that's the feminine. This is the feminine. What happens? She's starting to open. She's starting to open. She's starting to wake us up and show us how fucking intuitive we are, how much we know without knowing, how interconnected we all are, how much we feel, and how much our heart breaks. 
how much our heart breaks. And she also shows us our longing, how much we are longing, 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 yearning for love and connection. Yearning, we're yearning for it, we're longing for it. That's the feminine, that's what she does. It's what she does. This is the divine feminine, this is her fucking gift. But we still, most of us, see it as a disadvantage. We see it as too fucking painful to open up to that much sensitivity, to open up to that much love, to open up to that much heartbreak, that much longing. But underneath all of that pain and heartbreak and longing and sensitivity and I need my fucking boundaries and meh, I can't live here anymore, right? Underneath all of that, we start to uncover the greatest gifts and mysteries of the feminine. Right? We start to uncover that in the longing is what pulls in consciousness. I want a conscious man. Fuck you, you can't handle a conscious man. Fuck you, you can't even feel your longing, much less attract that in, because then if you can feel your longing for it and you have the capacity to magnetize it in, you've got conditions on it. Must show up like this, must be that. Then on top of that conditional stuff, you have inability to fucking receive it, right? Divine masculine, we're all like, where's the conscious man out of here that all the time, right? Okay, okay, conscious man is coming right at you, right? You either don't fucking see him, you shut the fuck down, right? You close, you collapse, and you're like, oh shit, oh shit, I'm fucking scared, I'm fucking scared. Too much, too much, I'm gonna have to see myself, I'm gonna have to see, oh my god, <laughs> right? Okay, <laughs> so, element number four, we've gotta get good with the divine feminine. <laughs> and the depths and everything that embodying the divine feminine brings. Everything that embodying the divine feminine brings. Something I want to share at this point is that when we start to work in the territory of sacred sexuality, we start to work with practices, we start to work with archetypal energies, whether we have a partner or not, Right? But we start to like consciously walk into these practices. We start to open this door to these different energies. We start to allow the kind of activation. It's an activation that happens. These lines get lit up and we start to remove everything that blocks us from that. It's just the removing of the rubble. It's the removing of the conditioning. It's the removing of the shame and the guilt and the pain and the trauma and the bad memories. We start to do that. We start to just walk into sacred sexuality, like solid good spaces. And there are solid good spaces out there. There are solid good teachers out there who've done the work. It's there, right? It's there. I know I was making a lot of fun of it at the start, but it's there. It's there. We start to do that. All of this innately fucking happens. So if you're going like, Sabrina, okay, this is great, but how do I do this? How, get in the spaces, get in the circles, do the practices, be with people who are embodying it, living it, doing it, right? It is just an innate transmission. You can probably feel in this just conversation, this live, this podcast, this YouTube video, wherever we're hanging out, you can probably feel the shifting, right? So know that you start to walk into sacred sexuality practices, authentic, deep, true ones, and this starts to happen. You you come into different relationship with the divine feminine, right? You come into, you move through the, the body relationship. You move into deeper love. You bring love to the unlovable, right? You start to let go of all of the constraints around sexuality, all of the limitations that we have around that. It just happens. And if you're now wondering, okay, great, Sabrina, where? Who's doing it? Yours truly. Yeah, <laughs> and not just in person. Yes, we do in-person retreats. We just came off of one, but we are opening up, or if you're listening to this later than the 17th of September, 2021, there's an online program. <laughs> there's an online program, Sacred Sexuality Foundations, where 
We're bringing these teachings in. We're bringing the archetypes in. We're opening up these channels. We're bringing in the divine feminine. We're bringing in the divine masculine. We're opening up to the capacity to receive. We're working through all of the wounds, all of the pain, all of the trauma. We're working through our capacity to hold that much light force, that much Shakti, AKA pleasure. But that's just a form of it, by the way. Again, that's just like minuscule. Okay, so um, there'll be links here. There'll be links below. There'll be links, sabrinalynn.com, you'll find it. I think we have it on rewildingforwomen.com as well. So if that sings to you, do it. It's less than $100 to do the basic program, right? Check it out. You've quite literally like nothing to lose. Okay, so let me, um, Stephanie, is it a live online retreat? It's pre-recorded, but if you join before the 17th, there are two lives that are happening. That'll be conversations like this where we can ask questions where I can dive into things a little bit deeper and in this live format. So depending on when you join, either it's all pre-recorded or um, there are two lives that support the three or five workshop journeys. Actually, it's one or two lives. So there's two ways of doing it, basic or comprehensive, depending on which, which you're feeling like. Um, okay, element number five. Let me just feel, <laughs> this is a good one. I love this one. So element number five, um, and I gotta touch on this. I have to touch on this because it's the question that will constantly reverberate in most people's heads and it might be reverberating. Maybe it's not because I, I, I think we've been in fiery enough so that it's not reverberating in this moment. But so often we are looking for um, where's the sex magic, right? And, and, and I can relate to this. Right? I know I'm lighting us up, but I'm only lighting us up because I was lit up like this and it's what gifted me, right? It's what took me beyond um, my, my, my like little curiosities. It, it's what took me to these places. So oh, I know how I'm gonna end. I'm gonna end on a story. I'm gonna end on a, my very first profound experience of sacred sexuality. That's what I'm gonna end on. So you definitely wanna hang out for that because it's, um, well, maybe you don't want to, but it's a pretty, it's a pretty good story. So um, <laughs> let me get to element five. So for me, it was beautiful because my hook in was very egoical, very egoical. In my 20s, you heard me say the story at the start, it was very egotistical. My hook in was better orgasms, what? <laughs> Sex transmutation, what? Sex magic, what? And maybe you can relate, right? You're probably, I'm not gonna say you're probably anything, maybe you can relate. I know for me it was my hook in. And this is what sacred sexuality is like. It's like, it's like this. <laughs> now I'm gonna repeat these words because they might, they're sometimes tough to, to hear. It's literally like the goddess saying to you, I will give you what you want, so you want what I have to give you. <laughs> right? I will give you what you want. Orgasms, pleasure, um, sex transmutation, sex magic, so that you want what I actually have to give you, which is enlightenment. Did you hear? En enlightenment. Enlightenment in the body, in the body, in every aspect of life, every aspect of life, like letting the sacred, letting the sacred flow through every fucking aspect of life, the hardest parts of life, the ickiest, gooeyest, weirdest, most unlovable parts of life, the sacred just flows, just flows. There is nowhere, no experience that is not God. I don't know what's better than that. I mean, orgasms are great. Yeah, and they're sacred as fuck, right? But this kind of ecstasy, this kind of ecstasy, nonstop ecstasy, nonstop, nonstop fucking ecstasy. That's what's on offer. And I will tell you that that's, for me anyways, for me, it's just a little bit more desirable than a really great cervical orgasm. I don't know. I don't know, it might not be the same for you. And I totally respect that. Because if someone would have told me this in my 20s, I'd have been like, don't really give a fuck, want the cervical orgasm, enlightenment, ecstasy in all areas of my life all the fucking time, meh. <laughs> all right, so 
Um, this final, <laughs> this final piece, I'll share this with you, is these things innately reveal themselves to you. These higher states of orgasm, these higher states of ecstasy, these sex magic reveals itself to you. It's I'm laughing you know, because just after this retreat, um, the team, the team and I were debriefing and we were, we laugh a lot in debriefing a lot. It moves a lot of energy and just kind of brings you back into, I don't know, your whole being after holding so much space for a long period of time. And we were laughing and we were <laughs> cracking this joke about, okay, but I want the practice for sex magic. Sabrina, give me the sex magic practice. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna give you the practice for sex magic. So here it is. Here's the practice for sex magic, right? Ready? Okay, so first you have to take off all of your clothes. Then the woman, if you're a woman, if you're a man, doesn't matter. You just, you rub nipples in this direction at this pace six times, okay? So that, you just do that first. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then you, if there's a penis involved, you go to the penis, you rub the tip of the penis, the opposite direction, the opposite direction three times, three, three times. Then the penis that you just rubbed the opposite direction three times, you insert that up the anus. Yep. You just, you just insert that right up the anus, right up the anus. And then you the person who has the penis inserted up their anus, they just blow out <sighs> and you just blow at whatever it is that you want to turn into a unicorn. You just, like right, you just point it right at whatever it is that you're wanting to turn into like a rainbow unicorn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was way funnier when everyone was together post retreat and we were cackling like a bunch of witches on the back patio. Really and truly this stuff will not activate, no practice. And, and by the way, you don't even need, you don't need the technical shit. There is no technical shit. There, there are some things that, that we could add to our arsenal, right? But they don't activate. They, they don't turn on, the switch doesn't turn on. It's like a witch out doing a ritual. And she's just like, wee, I'm casting a spell. Okay, you don't have the juice. It ain't turned on. The alchemy can't happen. It's not on yet, right? That's what I wanna say about element five is turning on all the magic to this. Go in, go deep, do it organically. Otherwise you're just placing more crap on top of all of the shit that's in there. Really? What I see and watch over and 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 I get to hear stories about is it is just this stripping back all of the false to get to what is true. It is the activations of the deep inner alchemical nature of this. It's just that. The magic fucking shit opens. The orgasms happen. And you don't need to rub the clitoris this way, stick a finger up like this, and then go like this, and you don't need to have like a jackrabbit up your ass in order to have a fucking cervical orgasm. You can literally just like look at someone and it happens, right? That's the power of this. So is we don't need tools, we don't need magic wands, we don't need, you know, like, rub the nipples this way and then the penis this way, stick it up your butt, blow out and you get a unicorn. It, it, you, it happens, it happens. It happens, but all that stuff has to be switched on. So learning the techniques and learning the, all that stuff, that's great. But if it ain't switched on and it ain't active, you ain't getting anywhere. It's just gonna be like acrobatics in the bedroom, which is cool too, which is cool too. If that's what you wanna do. So I'll share my story. I have two stories, really quick. One story, this was a mystery school term two. Um, so the women and I had been working together very deeply for a very long period of time. At the time, this was our like deepest offering, mystery school two. So there was two women in this circle who were in long-term relationships, marriages, long-term marriages that were extraordinarily tantric, practicing tantric relationship, practicing sacred relationship, really deep for years and years and years and years and years and years and years. So I asked them to speak when we come to the component on sacred sexuality. We could come to the component on Tantra. Ask them to speak, both of them. This is what they say. I'm like, can you both just share like the best thing that you can share with us on, on this path, on, on your experience over years and years and years of this? Like, what would you share with the group? They were like, 
It is the deepest motherfucking shadow work you will ever do. Both of them. This is the path of no stone left unturned. If it is anything, it is intense, fiery shadow work. There's no place that you get to hide, no place you get to run from. You literally bring love and divinity into the worst of the worst. The deepest fears, the deepest secrets, the most hidden places in self. Love and light right in there. Ah, um, my other story, I'll, I'll end on this story. Whew. This one might bring some tears. Yep. So, um, I convinced my partner to go to an archetype workshop with me. It's literally, we're just exploring archetypes. That's it, nothing on Tantra, nothing on sacred sexuality, right? This is, we are just doing some archetypal embodiment, a lot of the work that you all do with me um, when you work in archetypes. We don't always work in the archetypes, but we're working in archetypal embodiment. And we go through two days of just working on the archetypes. He's, we're embodying the same archetypes, feminine, masculine. We're just embodying these archetypes. That's all we're doing, very solo journey that we're both on. Very solo journey, there's no partner practices at all. And so we're both going through this and we get to, it might have been the night of day one, I don't know, maybe it was the night of day two. And we're, um, we're starting to get intimate and I remember we're, we're naked, we're making love, and I'm, I'm on top of him. And I, I look down at him, and all I see is Christ. Is, and I don't see, it's not a see, it's a sense, it's a feel. And for me, Christ is just a representation of divine masculine, of, of divinity. Of, of, it's, it's an archetypal energy, so don't get caught up in the religious aspect of it, right? And I look down and there are tears streaming down my face and all I can say to him in that moment is, it's you. Oh my God, it's you. I forgot. I forgot. I, f I forgot, like, how could I have forgotten? How could I have forgotten that it's you? That it's you. Um, the interesting thing, we didn't speak other words other than me um, sharing with him, just, it's, oh my God, it's you. And then I shared something like, Please remind me when I forget, I'm gonna forget again. I'm, I know I'm gonna forget, I know I'm gonna forget. Please, please let me remember. Please let me remember when I forget. And so he shares no words. He has tears streaming, but he shares no words during this. And afterwards, <laughs> we're, we're talking and he's like, you know when you shared that with me? I saw you as Jesus. I saw you as Jesus. And to have said to him, that's how I saw you. That's how I saw you. I'm telling you, these kinds of experiences, these places, these, it, you can't go back. <laughs> you don't get to go back. You don't get to go back. Um, to the way things were before, um, to thinking that the sacred is not in the mundane, to thinking that every human is not a divine piece of God or goddess. You just don't. Hmm. Whew. Wow. I might go cry the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> uh, so y'all are so incredibly invited. Um, to journey into sacred sexuality online. We actually get to explore a um, piece of that union that I just spoke about, but we don't do it through Mary Magdalene and 
Jesus energy, we do it through Shiva and Parvati energy. Um, yeah. If it sings to you, whew, it's there, it's there. It's, the space is there, the practices are there, it's there. Thank you all so, 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 so much. Um, if you're here on the live, this will be on YouTube. If you're on YouTube and you want to leave a comment, you want to like, you want to subscribe so you don't miss anything, please do. We read all of the comments. Um, we are super grateful for shares, for just, yeah, this is, this is part of my life's work. And um, sharing what is, you know, sometimes seemingly unshareable. It's like loving the unlovable. Um, yeah, just appreciate you all. Appreciate that we get to go to these spaces together. Thank you. Hmm.